Hello everyone, Simon Jacobson here. I welcome you again to a, our weekly Sunday Meaningful Live. Due to the circumstances and also the time period in which we are in, as I'll explain in a moment, we titled this Dire Straits, Unleashing Its Enormous Power. This period in the Jewish calendar is actually called in Hebrew, between dire straits, between boundaries, between tight place, referring to the saddest period of the Hebrew calendar. The day, today, almost 2,000 years ago, when the walls of Jerusalem were breached, which would then lead to the destruction of the second holy temple by the Romans. And interestingly, eerily, you can say, that 290 years before that, I was to say 490 years before that, the first temple was also breached the walls of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, according to some opinions. So this is the beginning of a three-week period, which will conclude in three Sundays from today with Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, the saddest day in the calendar, in the Hebrew calendar, when the destruction of the temple actually took place, again, both by the Babylonians and 490 years later by the Romans, first and second temples. So ever since, it's commemorated as a sad period, as the saddest period. And the reason for that is it's not just we're busy remembering grievances of the past, losses of the past, because these events symbolize every form of straits, dire straits, and tough situations that we are in throughout history. Because the temple represented that archetype of essentially where heaven and earth converge. All of us are looking to reach the greatest heights, transcendence, and bring it into our material and daily lives. The holy temple represented that. It was a gate to heaven, in the words of Jacob. A place where spirit met matter, spirituality and, and materialism came together. And once that was destroyed, it became far more difficult to, to integrate the two. And thus, it's not just events of the past. Every year during this period, we remember the difficult challenges we have in internalizing and integrating our spiritual higher values and, and our material daily lives of survival. And indeed, sadly, just a few days ago, just as we're about to enter these dire straits in the Champlain Towers in Surfside, South Florida, a uh, structure collapsed mysteriously and people are stuck in dire straits. Hopefully, we pray for them that they will be miraculously recovered. But regardless, there were quite a few lives already have been unfortunately taken. And if you ever see an expression of dire straits, of a breaching of a wall or a breaching of a structure, here you have it. So it's quite um, uh, eerie and um, hard to wrap our heads around, I'm not looking to sensationally connect things, just to address the issues. So this concept of uh, dire straits, of being in a pressured situation, what some people call being between a rock and a hard place, is something that each one of us individually, collectively have surely experienced more than once in our lives. And it's quite uncomfortable, to say the least, and it could be much more than uncomfortable, as we see, it could actually be life-threatening, if not actually take lives. And yet, the human resilience that we have within us, in our spirit, is tested and expressed most when we're under pressure. There's an expression in the Talmud that says that an olive does not produce oil until it's pressed pressure. So we all hate pressure. We all hate deadlines. But that's when we thrive and that's when we excel. So I want to make it very clear here. I'm not suggesting that we need to have these difficult situations to become excellent. I'm suggesting that once they're there, we have to see them as such that they actually have tremendous power that when unleashed can really transform ourselves and our lives and everything around us. Some of the greatest experiences in life, if many, maybe all of them, came in a situation of pressure, of difficulty. That's when you need to innovate, to be creative, 
and even ingenious in trying to find a way out of a situation. When there's a problem, you look for a solution. When things are going smoothly, there's no need to seek. So again, we don't want it in extremes like we're having it right now, where you have over 150 people unaccounted for, and who knows what's happening, and their families are, are desperate, and we all are anticipating to hear some good news. And all the different dire straits that we've been through in history, beginning the one that I mentioned about this period in time, the breach of the wall, which ultimately led to destruction, which wasn't just destruction, it was many deaths and expulsion, a uh, displacement of the highest order. And the same throughout history, whether you talk about holocausts of one sort or another, including, of course, the Holocaust 80 years ago, these all go into this category. And at the same time that they're unwanted, and actually we would rather not have them in any way, and we pray that they should never come upon us, but after the fact interesting and powerful things have occurred. Viktor Frankl, though his theories were already developed before the Holocaust, but when in the Holocaust, in the concentration camps, it confirmed some of the theories. Man's search for meaning, that search for meaning was able to not weaken and not in any way minimize the pain, but give an additional resource, an additional, in the arsenal of the human spirit, ability to get through even the most difficult things and in many ways to shine and to re- and, and, and become refined in unprecedented ways. I speak from my own experience. Thank God I've not been through such a fire. But people I've met who have been through very difficult, dire straits, when they come through it and they heal, I don't know if there's any people on earth that are more refined and more brilliant and more shining with a certain inner glow that can only be for someone who's gone through the fire and has come out stronger in the process. But... It's a deep deep challenge and one that, as again, is unwanted and we don't wish for it. But when we're in a situation like that, I I cannot resist today being that 17th of Tammuz, the Hebrew calendar, the beginning of this period of dire straits, to talk about this. And another expression that is uh, from the book of Psalms, powerful expression that says, I cry out to you from my dire straits, from my crushed place, from my narrow place, and you respond to me from the width and expansion, from your expansiveness, which, of course, captures this very theme and this essence, because when we're crying out, and there's no louder cry, and I don't mean loud by sound, but there's no more powerful cry than the one that comes from a dire strait, from when we're stuck in a situation, because we're desperate and we're looking and we're seeking for something. And that cry, because it comes from the depths of who we are, reaches the depths of the highest expansive states. So let's talk about that a bit in the mystical and the Kabbalistic and Hasidic context. When, just to use an example, when presented with an idea, let's say there's a debate going on, intellectual debate, and there are many people arguing a point. And one person in that room, among the debate, is a, everyone knows, is a brilliant th- thinker and clearly has an opinion on the matter. But for whatever reason he chooses, he or she she chooses not to share their thoughts. So what, 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 I'm tongue-tied. What requires more strength, for that person to speak or for that person to remain silent? It's an interesting question because we don't see the power of restraint. We usually see the power of expression. Restraint is something that's an invisible force, but if you think about it, if someone has what to pre- present, if someone has energy to give off, and they choose to restrain, it actually requires more exertion, more power to restrain. Think of the black hole. The black hole has never been seen, but it's been witnessed through its effects on its surroundings. Essentially, that the gravitational pull of this star, of this body, is so powerful that it doesn't even allow light to escape. So who has more gravity? The sun that gives off light? Whose gravity is more powerful? Or the black hole? Interesting question. And it it turns everything on its head. In a sense, when we say, for example, that the eclipse of the sun reveals more about sunlight than does sunlight, the same idea. When when things are shining brightly, we see many things. It reveals many things. But when you see... What's the power of restraint when you see something with someone withholding? It reveals another power that you could not see when they're expressing themselves. 
Silence, yes, the sound of silence can be more powerful than the sound of sound. In the context of the, mystic, the mystics, the way they put it is that when we look at the world around us and we see joyous occasions and beautiful occasions, people celebrating, people expressing themselves. So yes, that expresses a very beautiful part of the human personality, human interaction, love, and so on. But when there's a situation where for whatever reason things are concealed, either people are in fear or there's a situation that is uh, un unknown and uncertain and tentative, that's when you see two things can happen. Either people, yes, cower in fear and they retreat or a deeper strength comes out from them. And that strength is not always expressed immediately. It could be their sheer resilience, their ability to withstand pressure or withstand the challenge. The fact that they can withstand it can take more effort than, the, than when you see it in a revealed expressive way. So in a sense, there are two types of light, the mystics put it. There's expressive light and there's intimate light. Expressive light is through expression. It's like when you speak, you express yourself. Intimate light or intimate energy is when you're not expressing it, but within you, you're holding it within you, not necessarily keeping it a secret, but it's not being expressed. That doesn't mean it's not there. And in many ways, the intimate energy within our souls is deeper than our expressive en en energy. That's why you find someone asks you to f express and describe your innermost feelings about something. We're always going to lack words. We may require metaphor, poetry, music, song, and sometimes just a cry, and sometimes silence itself. The Zohar, the classic work of Jewish mysticism, says there's a voice that has no sound. And that's the most powerful voice of all. That's why you find, both in positive, some people are in such a state of ecstasy and joy, there are no words, they can't even express, they can't even laugh. It's like complete, awesome type of silence. And the same in the other extreme, people are in shock from pain, can't even cry or express themselves. This is all indicating that expression itself is limited containers using the Kabbalistic language of containers. In other words, there's only that much you can express in words. There are times it has to be between the lines, alleg allegory, metaphor, song, sometimes things that are not actual containers that really can express a lot more, and to the point that even silence itself, and, and specifically silence, can express the most of all. And the same is true when we talk about human suffering and pain. On one hand, everyone wonders the big, big question, why do good people suffer? Why should they be suffering altogether? Which, of course, goes hand in hand with the question, why is there, why is there joy? Why is there life? If you're going to ask why there's darkness, you have to ask why there's light. And yet it exists. So you can, we can just be very pained and bitter about it and just lie down and say, I give up, resigned. Or we see it as another form of energy. How can I tap into this moment of pain or grief and trauma? How could that be turned into a catalyst that catapults me to another place? And there's no question that's possible. Obviously in stages, everything has its time. When a person goes through any type of healing, first there's a certain catharsis you need to absorb. You need to have that shock and silence. But as time passes, the dire straits can provide us with a tremendous boost of energy that catapults us to another place altogether that we would never get there were we not in that type of pressured state. And indeed, all energy is generated that way. Look at a pump. Contraction, expansion. If it doesn't contract, it can't expand. The more it contracts, the more it can expand. When you, for example, shoot a bow and arrow, the further back you draw, the further farther it will, fall, it will fly. And the same thing is psychologically and emotionally. That when you want to reach deeper places, you need to draw back. During that moment of drawing back, it can seem like a state of concealment, a state of silence. But indeed, that itself is carrying the power that will be thrust forward. There's an expression in the book of Ezekiel, which the Kabbalists use extensively, to describe the concept of tension and resolution. And you find people in writing and literature and so on, tension and resolution. Every story needs tension and resolution. Drama. Tension and resolution is the contraction and expansion of the heartbeat, of the pulse. It is the exhaling and inhaling of the breath. 
and it lies at the heart of all generating of all generating generation of energy in every given form. Two poles, positive and negative, where you have the pushback, you have the tension, and then the resolution. And the same thing is in our own personal lives. I remember when speaking to a cardiologist, a very good man, known for many years, come to my classes, but has a difficult life. You can say a life of dire straits, yes. And once we were speaking, he said to me, maybe you can just pray for me and have one day of bliss, one day of calm. Many issues, health issues, family issues. And just to lighten the moment, I said to him, do you, are you, do you mean like a uh, flat line? Of course, as a cardiologist, no, you don't want a flat line. He says, no, 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 not that calm. Not that calm. A flat line, of course, is no heartbeat. If you look at a cardiogram, think of it. That the cardiogram is a wave with its peaks and its valleys. A healthy heartbeat, a healthy pulse, is equally balanced. The peaks and the valleys, the peaks and the valleys. If it's too extreme, the peaks are too extreme or the valleys are too extreme, that can be a problem. If the tension is unresolved, or the resolution is more powerful than the tension, you're not going to have growth. You constantly need the dance of these two. Now, in our lives, very of, we tend, we gravitate toward comfort zones, to being a couch potato. I'd rather not do anything. But when you think about it, it goes against the very grain and the very nature of life itself, which is mobility, is movement. And that movement is, what type of movement? That movement is essentially the tension and resolution of life. So high-level anxiety is an extreme. High-level depression is another extreme. High-level of mania or high-level of depression, these are extremes. We need to have a healthy measure of angst, of restlessness, like a flame. Think of a flame. Same idea. Flame is an approximation of what the soul is like. It's flickering. It reaches up only to be grounded by the wick. So in life... We need to understand that life is a journey. Never see it as one scene. There's no one frame. If you were to freeze the moment of tension, you'd think that life is all about tension. If you were to freeze the moment of resolution, you'd think everything is about resolution. It's a movement. One is leading to the next all the time. The cardiogram. So when you think of the dire straits in that sense, not as an end in itself, it's a period of the year where we respect and honor and humbly recognize that there are times we need to go into a more pressured place. So again, let's take away the pain and the trauma part of it. That we'd like to get rid of altogether. But sometimes it comes with the turf. So we recognize that my experience of it, not the pain itself, my experience of it, should be one that's part of a a narrative. And the narrative is building toward a greater climax, a greater height. And that's exactly what dire straits are about. That's why they carry such enormous power. Eliminate them and you will not have that pressure. You will not have that intensity. You will not have the pullback. You won't have that thrust forward either. You'll have a much more mediocre, a much more, a much more, ba- a much more uh, simple and neutral type of position. Now, I know some people aspire to that and can wait because of life being so challenging, but it's not the healthy version of what a pulse is about. And I mean by pulse, not just our physical pulse, in our heart pulse, in our heartbeat, but also in our entire lives, that dance. Now, the challenge is how do you maintain that type of composure, especially when you're in a difficult position? When you're in a difficult position, it's hard to say and, and we'll start waxing eloquent and becoming philosophic and say, hey, you know what? This is just a stage. Yes, philosophically and conceptually, it makes sense. The challenge is emotionally. And that's why it's vital, before we enter any type of ups and downs of this nature, before there's a tension, to know and anticipate that in life there's going to be seasons. There's going to be the winter season, and there'll be the summer season. And there'll be the spring and the autumn in between. And that's a cycle of life, and the same thing in emotional, psychologically. So number one is to prepare and anticipate. When you do that, then it makes it a little easier that when the storm comes, or the dire straits settle in, that we're ready for it. That's one. Don't take life for granted. Prepare in the years of plenty for the years of famine. That's vital. The second thing is, the more you connect to the rhythm of your spiritual journey, the the easier it is to navigate. Not suggesting that at times it can be almost impossible or formidable, 
But the more empowered you are, it's like anything. You go to war and you don't come trained without weapons in your arsenal, it's going to be very difficult to, to battle and win the battle. So the second thing is to arm yourself. And you arm yourself with spiritual resources, with spiritual tools, understanding that the soul comes from a very pure, blissful place into a world of tension and hostility and difficulty and duplicity and all that comes with it. But knowing that you're coming armed and you can always feed and nourish your soul, that gives you power to get through these challenges. That's the second thing to know. And the third thing is to understand the purpose of it all. There's a purpose in it all. A purpose for to achieve greatness and excellence. So any setback and any tension is meant to bring even a greater form of resolution, a greater form of growth and excellence. A fourth thing to keep in mind. Surround yourself with good friends. People who are encouraging, inspiring, uplifting, believe in you. Hold on to them because we need each other. Especially when we're in a dire strait or dire straits, that's the best time to reach to each other. But that too should be prepared beforehand. So when the situation comes, you're well entering well armed with all kinds of resources and tools. Be wise. Think ahead. Remember, life is going to have its twists and turns, its ups and downs. As we're now entering this period of dire straits, and people right now are suffering, whether it's in South Florida or other parts of the world, individually, privately, collectively, it's vital for us to join together and build the structures that we're capable of building. That means the structures of our families and our homes and the people we love connect in a deeper way. Now, I know people would think this time is like we're in a time where we feel really isolated or lonely or even angry. The best way to counter that is become more loving, more connected more than ever, is the counterforce to disconnection, to disruption, to the collapse of structures or buildings, to the collapse of spirits. The best way to fight the best defense is offense. And offense is by strengthening our bonds and strengthening our connections with each other and even with people you may not know. Imagine if we can create a groundswell of a ripple effect of such unity, of such love. Rebuilding, reinforcing, or even building even greater structures than what we've had till now. Will that solve our immediate problem? Oh, there we need to make sure that every person as possible to be saved can be saved, and we pray that all will be. But we also have to think long-term and also think psychologically and emotionally. The toll this takes on us is the lives, nothing is comparable to life. But it still takes a toll on families and others, and we need to be strong in times like this. Every act we do, every good word, every good thought, can tip the scales. So let's join together in a time like this. When the straits are dire, that's when we need to connect with each other even more than ever. And that's why the prophet says that Zion will be redeemed through study. And it's captives, yes, captives and hostages, wherever they may be and under any given situation, whether it's under rubble, or in any other psychologically or emotionally, are redeemed through charity, kindness, acts of goodness and kindness. May God bless the people on the surf side, their families, that they should be saved and found and discovered in miraculous fashion, give strength to deal with all the challenges ahead. May God bless you and every person everywhere that these dire straits should be ultimately transformed into days of joy and celebration, unleashing, unlocking the tremendous potency and power that lies in the darkest moments, in the core, the center of the black hole. Be blessed, be healthy, be well. Please stay in touch. Please comment, please share. Love to hear your feedback. And we should all be strong and only share good news.